while in Washington. There is potential progress this morning in a Senate deal uh, on immigration reform. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer announced the chamber will delay its holiday break and return next week to try to hammer out a deal on the border. Something Republicans say is crucial to winning over their votes to pass more funding for Ukraine and Israel. Chief Democratic Negotiator Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut said negotiators will work through the weekend. But Republican Senator Lindsey Graham was dismissive about a possible deal and House Republicans also were skeptical. They haven't written anything down. We've been doing this for 90 days. There is no legislative text. The White House just got involved three days ago. You expect to, you know, to run out the clock and get it done. I look forward to voting no to a bad deal next week. I am not going to be pressed to do something that doesn't make sense. Our position in the House has been clear from day one, secure the border. We've not changed. But even would you come back if they were able to, let's say, have strike a deal next week? Well, I would say that depends on what this deal looks like. But historically, when the Senate cuts a deal amongst the Senate, it's typically a bad deal for the country. So, John Bresnahan, you are our insider up there on Capitol Hill. Um, tell us what this is. There really potential for a deal? Is this kind of wishful thinking with the Senate suggesting maybe it will come back next week to get something done? And what is the proposal that the White House says it could support to get something done here? Yeah, I mean, I think Joe had a really good point before. You know, there, there's always a chance. You know, they already already talks gloom and doom, and then there's some deal emerges. I don't know in this case. I'm not sure there's a sweet spot on immigration. The Senate has, you know, passed a, a, a gang of eight bill back in 2013 and it got shot down in the House. Um, immigration is one of the toughest issues Congress deals with. So I'm not sure even Republicans can agree amongst themselves. Forget about the White House and, and uh, agreeing with the Republicans or, or the Democratic leadership in the House and Senate agreeing with the Republicans. I'm not sure you could get a deal between House and Senate Republicans on an immigration bill. So I, I think this is really a difficult issue. I mean, we're talking about parole, we're talking about asylum, we're talking about detention. Every time that the White House moves toward Republicans, it's got to worry about it. It's left. It's got, you know, the Hispanic caucus doesn't like what it hears. Uh, progressives don't like what they hear. I mean, I had Pramila Jayapal telling me between, you know, this potential deal and what's happening in Gaza, I mean, that's fraying the coalition, the very coalition that Biden needs to get reelected. So I think the timing on this is really, really extraordinarily sensitive. I, I, I just don't, I'm, I have a hard time seeing them doing a deal in the short term, maybe into January, but in the short term, I just have a hard time seeing it come together. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense and by January, being able to put something together, write something down, because more at the end of the day, I even even well, I, I know the Republican senators don't want to go out campaigning, being the people that stood in the way of aid to Israel and aid to Ukraine and also a pretty good uh, deal on, on the southern border. I think we need to look to what what happened with the defense appropriation bill. It passed when normal people rolled over the crazy people on the far right in both parties. Republicans, Democrats have passed last night. I suspect there won't be a deal that the hard, uh, hard uh, right backbenchers will ever support on immigration. Uh, but taken all together, it does seem that if they get rolled again, it's a possibility, right? It seems possible. I think the analogy that, I, that keeps coming to mind, though, is the way we used to talk about abortion. So before Roe v. Wade got overturned with Dobbs, you know, a, the abortion issue was an extremely powerful one for the, the Republican base because they could use Roe v. Wade as kind of the boogeyman. And the moment that the Dobbs decision fell, you know, came out, that actually just completely reversed the political dynamic. And now, of course, this has been an issue that's very powerful for Democrats. I think similarly, it's very easy when Republicans are not in the White House to blame the Democratic president, in this case Joe Biden, of course, for any issue at the border. And I think striking a deal on immigration is probably, to their mind, not in the best interest at the moment for Republicans. Now, that doesn't mean it's, I mean, it's certainly in the best interest of the, of the country to secure the border, to get a rational immigration system. We've needed this for two decades. 
But I don't right. know that Republicans are uh, thinking about it in those terms. I think they have an election coming up, and this is a good boogeyman for them. So they can continue yeah. to blame the president and Democrats as long as they don't strike a deal. If they do strike a deal, they've got to put their name to whatever happens after that. And, and that just doesn't and, and, fly and, with yeah. the Republican base. Yeah, they don't want to do that. It's just like health care reform. They want to attack Obamacare. It's been 14 years, 13 years. They've never done anything on it. They, they've never done anything on immigration reform. They were talking about doing something in 2013. Two people complained and they all backed off. The gang of seven or whatever gang they called it, they all backed off because they're cowards. But in this case, you have, for Democrats at least, you, Joe Biden has a cover of Democratic mayors, Democratic governors. Uh, you have John Fetterman, a progressive from Pennsylvania, uh, Democratic leaders across the country saying, we need the border secured. Let's figure out a smart, humane, safe way to do it, and let's secure the border. So that at least gives Joe Biden the position. And the question is, can they put a deal out that's simple enough to understand that if Republicans say no to it, they, it can be used against them throughout 2024? Completely. I mean, the, the irony here is that the Democrats, as you said, are probably the most willing to play ball um, that they have ever been. And of course... You know, the, it's also just frustrating because the, the reality is that the American economy actually needs more workers. And so it is in the interest of business across America, of small towns across America, to find a way to get this deal done, to welcome safely, appropriately more workers into this country. It will help the economy. You know, Republicans know that, but they don't want to give up this boogeyman. And I think that's an extremely frust frustrating point. And of course, what we have too is that right now, the way they see it is that the Democratic cities are paying the price at the moment uh, for the failure to enact immigration reform. So it's working for them. It's working for them politically, and they don't want to give up that bone.